This is it. What? Fettuccine with the team, we getting lit. What? Got it rolled up. Now who really trying to hit? One. Puff, puff. Then we pass. Then we pass. Then we pass. This is it. What? Fettuccine with the team, we getting lit. What? Got it rolled up. Ooh. We back. Hey, y'all. It's nice out. It is nice. It's all warm and sunny and ooey and gooey. Ooey and gooey. Springtime is here. Summertime right around the corner. Summertime around the corner. The temperatures kind of showed up for us. They they showing up. I like when the temps show up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They show up and show out. It's a good sign. And, and you know when you know when the legs come out, the knees come out, the titties come <laughs> out, and the nipples come out, and the the bussy come listen, out and everything. Hey, listen, it is what it is. That's what happens. It's gonna sit real nice in my shorts. You already know. Listen, man, it's your neighborhood good guys. The Herbal Tea Podcast. <laughs> hey. It's your man Earn Tone. Earn Tone. <laughs> Who the fuck is Earn Tone? <laughs> Who the fuck is Earn Tone, nigga? Who is that? <laughs> it's your man Earth Tone. <laughs> and your man the real peasy. What's oh man. On? Episode 51. 51. I, getting old, man. I thought you was going to say Earn like from Atlanta. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, <laughs> it's on my mind and shit. Like, who the fuck is Earn Tone? kind of lit, right? I mean, you know, it's a mixture. It's a mixture, right? Exactly. That's exactly. what it's going. That's, that's the vibes. That's, what's, that's Earth, what it's giving it. Earth Tone Glover. Yeah, man. We out here. But hey, we back. We back. And we going we going to take it right to the streets, man. It's been, I feel like we ain't been in the streets in a minute. Yo, we haven't been in the streets in a minute because people who shall not remain nameless... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the name that shall not be named. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Out there, you know, holding our shit. But um, that's in the past. We'll move on. We back now. We are back. You know what I'm saying? They ain't want us to win, but look at us thriving. And but winning. we gonna win. We gonna win. You know what I mean? Because God want us to win. Oh. <laughs> Bro, God into it. Period. Oh, shit. You know it's real. You already know. Come on, man. So... All right, check this out. It's been a lot going on. There's been a been lot a going on in these streets. I'm so, so happy to be part of the festivities. You already know how it goes. We're going to start with Needle Drop. Mm. Y'all ain't had that in a minute. No. We're going to give y'all that. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. First one up the bat. Uh-huh. Chance the Rapper. Come on, Chance. Child of God. Giving acid rap tea. You know how I feel about Chance. You know what I'm saying? It's my man. I mean, you pointed that out. He's been he been disappointing lately. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't been really showing been, up. He ain't been showing up. Then he kind of he fell back. He fell back. He, he fell got, all the way back. Family life. He got married and all that. All you know of what I'm that. Saying? He had the whole album based on it. Ain't nobody really want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? So he took he took a breather. He got the hint. He read the room. Pretty much. And he went and sat down for a little bit. He sat down for a little bit. Let his brother do his thing. Come on, Taylor. You know what I'm saying? And now uh, he's back with Child of God. Mm. Next one. The one that you fucking with. Uh oh, what we got? Mickey Blanco. Mickey, Mickey Blanco. That's, that's who that was. That's who it was. Okay, see, I was close. I was, was. close. You was okay. definitely in the neighborhood. I knew I knew the Mickey. I'm like, who is. Yeah. Okay. Nah, 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 nah. Ooh. Mickey Blanco's back with Family Ties featuring Michael Stipe. I like that one. You already know. Yeah. Next up the bat. Kid Cutter, Come Kid on, Cuddy, Cuddy. Cuddy. That's my jam jam. I want it bad. It's not bad. Yeah. It's not bad. Grooving on that You know track. what I'm saying? And we're giving Kid Cuddy the allyship because he's been out here definitely representing mm-hmm. in hip hop. Yes, absolutely. On multiple occasions. You know what I'm saying? So he's not been silent about homophobia and hip hop and trying to like silence all that, dead all of that. Yep. So we're giving it to Cuddy. Um, Sylvester, you know what I'm saying? The? The Sylvester. Okay. I threw him on there because I first of all, I've been trying to get him in there since that last episode. But we giving it to him now. It's called I Need Somebody to Love Me mm. Tonight. And it's kind of like really a wavy disco banger. You know what I'm saying? Like... Not a, there's not any lyrics to it. Not too many lyrics. Mm-hmm. He's just vibing, and, it's and it's a, a it shit goes. Mm. It kind of goes. Okay, you already know. Come on, Sylvester. Last last one is a new one. New one. You might have heard of it. Might not have heard. Dolce. 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 Hmm. You know what I'm saying. I heard of Dolce. Of course. And Gabbana. Of course. 
no relation yet. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's a new queen out there. I was put onto it by the streets because you know I'm out here. That, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. It's a club around here that was, um, you know, just newly opened up since the pandemic and whatnot. And some people that I, you know, ran into in the, in the situation mm. put me on the dochi. So okay. I went and saw who the fuck she is and she's out here. Okay. She's definitely giving queerness. Okay. Definitely representing hard body. And she got a song called Persuasive. Persuasive. And I think it's pretty dope. Okay. It's kind of housey situation. You know what I'm saying? She's doing her thing. Come on, don't you? All right. So, first of all, mm. you just asked me about this before the show went on. Um, have okay. I heard about Queens? <sighs> Yeah, they couldn't. We could. We can't have nice things. Nothing. We can't have nice things. Like nothing. Though. But you know what? I we. You know what's crazy? I was talking to Hood about it earlier, like when the show started. I was mm-hmm. like, you know what? I'd be surprised at this last past one season. Ooh. Not because it was going to be early? bad. Yeah. Not because it was going to be bad, and it's it's not bad. Like as it turns out, like it's not a bad show. Not because it was going to be, but just because. You know, we don't always get our fair shot yeah. when we doing things, especially the women, especially for something like that. You know what I'm saying? True. But all female led cast, all female led cast, black, yep. pretty much running it. Yep. But at the same time, here's what really happened. I think really went down. I think that they were gonna do a second season, but Eve got Remy Ma. Eve. That's when Remy Ma came in. They was trying to set her up, they up was, to be like, take Eve place. Maybe, Something happened. I don't and know. I don't know. Because it got, it got different when Eve bounced. It did. It took a turn it took for a something little, else. It took a little bit of energy out of it. And then she was still around, but not. Like, not it was kind of. They kind of killed her off. And then yeah, they kind of like, like huh? did they kill her off? Yeah. But you know. I'm not going to dwell too much on it, but I did have a little bit of a post-mortem that I want to just wow. leave it. Wow. And because, um, you know. Okay. Like, this is. That's how you feel it? Yeah. And I think it'll explain it all. And okay. We can move on. Okay. All right. So, it arrived with a literal bang of pyrotechnics reminiscent of the million dollar budget videos we all know and love, inspired by platinum superstars and lofty Hollywood ambitions of the era. All of a sudden, we wanted to spend all our time with the nasty girls in their nasty world. They took us on the heart of Queens, reminded us at the same time how it used to be for women rappers in the game, how it should have been, what it could have been, why and how it evolved. Mm. It was transcendent, artfully done with the kits you would expect from millennial executives at an ABC office reflecting on MTV era. Cause come on y'all. Um, special props to executive producers Zaheer McGee mm. of Scandal fame, Sabrina Wind of Desperate Housewives fame, and Tim Story of Barbershop fame, plus well-known videos by Jagged Edge, Tyrese, and The Locks to name a few. Wow. For pushing the culture forward from the belly of the bitch and demonstra- demonstrating why eso lo tengo yo. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Last, but far from the least, the nasty bitches themselves. Eve, a.k.a. Professor Sex, and Brianna. Brandy as explicit lyrics. And Naomi, Nadine Velasquez as Butter Pecan and Valeria. And the Tory Norton as Jill the Thrill for showing up with the bars, the drama, and the showmanship, whether they wrote those bars or not. It's a show, y'all. Even with the supporting cast, Jada Kiss, Cameron, Lil Muffin, Trina, Remy, and all the others. The girls definitely going to run that. Mm. Here's the hoping somebody else will pick it up on another platform. You never know. Hey. That's where we at. Well period, done. Period. Period. That was really good. They they should have paid you to write that. Like, I'm that saying was they crazy. really listen. Holla at me, you ABC, that. Disney. Word. You know what I'm saying? Show up. Yeah, y'all y'all spazzing. You already know. All right. Shout out to Janelle Monet coming out as non-binary. Okay. You already know what it okay. is. Okay. Shout out to Lil Nas X for did? the Long Live Montero tour. First big headlining tour. What we doing? Forever, like any time. Are we going to see Nice? Listen, 
Um, first of all, count the sponsors. I mean, Cash App, Pepsi, mm. Situation. When are you going to be at the Barclays? I saw the commercial. He's going to be at Radio City Music Hall in New York Ooh. for two days. And I think it's September 19th and 20th. And the tickets have not sold out yet. But you already know they're going to go. You already know they're going up. Mm-hmm. I think it's at least. That's a nice venue. I like yeah, Radio it's City. A nice, it's a, definitely a nice venue. Uh, I think it's about $160 for one of the mezzanine seats. Mm. And it just goes up from there. Like, okay. you can get floor seats for about $1,000 now. Ooh. A thou A A grand. Who paying a thou for floor I'm seats? Just saying, pff, these kids. Hey, they got it. They might got it. Okay, trust me. You babies. already know. We're just giving them props because first major pop black gay superstar headline. That's a big deal. It's you a know, big deal. It's a lot. Coming off a successful album with two number one hits mm. and four top fives, I think, or top tens. You think him and Jack Harlow's tour is going to meet up? Like, is they going to collide? Oh, my God. Kind of pop out and pop up? That'd be cute. That'd be hard. That'd be so cute. That'd I mean, they've been kind of with the shits the whole That's time. I'm saying. It would be hard. It'd be very, very hard. You already know. Tickets are definitely going fast. Uh, they he's definitely showing up to Philly after the, after New York. And mm. This is in the fall. Um, I think it starts in July, um, or excuse me, September. And then he comes here. Then he goes to Philly, New, D.C., Atlanta. You already know all the major markets where there's you know the kids be. Um, shout out to Saucy Santana being mm. s- signed to RCA. Okay, come on, yes. Saucy. You already know that now they now it's official. He's label mates with Lil Nas X because. RCA is a Sony record label, and Lil Nas X is on Columbia, which is a Sony record label. So, you know. Look at how that works. That means anything. You know what I'm saying? Um, shout out to Robin and Mape. Okay, so they did a remix for, okay, this is going to probably take us back a little bit. Mm-hmm. Nena Cherry's Buffalo Stance. You familiar with Nena Cherry? Mm-mm. Nena Cherry had this breakout song in 1990, probably a little bit too young to even kind of be taking wind of it. But I've heard of the song. No one you mean in my love. Okay, all right, that that kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, from kitchen it's, of vibe. It's, it's it was <laughs> like you know what I'm saying. She's like from the UK. I might have known if I hear it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. She's from the UK. Okay, and she kind of had a crossover hit here, and then you know she kind of did. Did some big What's things. What's her name? Nana Cherry. Nana Cherry. I Nana like Cherry. Name. As it so happened, you know, she was kind of big. She kind of had. She has a song with Biggie that people don't really know about. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. So she had an album. It was her joint featuring Biggie. Her joint. She did a remix of one of the songs on her album featuring Biggie. Okay. So you know what I'm saying? But her big hit was Buffalo Stance, and she's an ally. She um definitely an ally because she did. She sell. She has an organization. That is called. Hold on, let me give you. Let me give you the whole thing. Black Trans Project, and it's a peer-led grassroots project supporting the well-being of Black trans communities. So, in honor of that, she celebrated Black uh, Trans Visibility Week, which was March thirty-first, mm-hmm. and put out a video for the remix, the the cover of that song, which was done by um, Robin and um, pop artist Mape. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So they re- they both okay. remade the song, Buffalo Stance, and mm-hmm. in the video, India Moore from Pose was mm. in it, kind of giving the whole Okay, tease, full circle. Full I love it. Full circle. So okay. The whole video actually is all trans people. That's hard. As it so happened. None of the artists actually in the song are in the video, but- Okay, you know, it's one of those. It was just okay. all about the trans I and kind of- highlighting that and kind of just standing the visibility for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to give it up to Nana Cherry for that, you okay. know, for that ally kind of, you know, showing love like that yeah. to the community. You already know what it is. Um, you've heard of Gerard Carmichael, haven't you? Yes. And he has a HBO special, mm-hmm. Rothaniel, where he, you know, basically comes out to the world. But you telling me... <laughs> <laughs> you telling me that you, you kind of saw I mean, the whole you saw the I had TVs. heard some things and seen some things did you so I wasn't so surprised no when it came out when the cat came out of the bag I kind of knew the cat was in there oh man the bus but was in um there. I knew the bus was in there yeah. 
But um, yeah, that was the first time he actually, you know, said it out loud, like, and you know, came out with it. But yeah, it was kind of kind of known thing. He's been around for a little bit. He's been here and there. He had his Carmichael show. I think he had like maybe three seasons before it got canceled. But um, I think uh, Lil Rel, that comedian, um, the dude that he was in uh, Get Out, but he kind of spawned the career off right, of that right. show. So he kind of been making people as well, making stars. Okay. Um, but yeah, he he's been around doing this thing for a minute. But he did something. I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but he kind of like made a nod to like him possibly being gay. So I wasn't surprised. <laughs> I actually have zero idea. Okay. Well, what was the was the stand up good though? As, aside from that, the uh, the special, the HBO special, was very good. Mm, okay, I gotta it check was it out. Very, very good. I gotta like, check it out. It's a whole cinematic look to it. I've never seen his stand up. Definitely emoted a lot because it was a lot of just like he would go back and forth between his real life story and telling jokes about it, and then kind of checking in with the audience. The audience checking in with him as mm-hmm. he kind of like, you know, plays the role of just somebody who's actually coming out and going through his feelings live and in in real time on hmm. stage. Interesting. So it's pretty interesting for something like that. I've never seen a comedy special formatted or, or in that context in that way. Wow. So I thought it was pretty dope for him. So shout out to Gerard Carmichael. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, coming into, you know, Living in his truth and shit. I'm starting to hate to say that because it's really got to get yeah, corny. Like, right, <laughs> truth, whatever. Shout out to you for living your goddamn life. Yeah, we love it. You already know. All right. So, um, Lambda, Club Lambda mm. opens in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, we were there. Yep. Shout out to them for getting their second location. Man. You know what I'm saying? They did a whole black tie affair on the 5th. They did of the May, thing. we were not able to be there, but we did show up for the opening weekend. We pulled up, kind of pulled up. You know what I'm saying? Kind of dropped the bill on them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was had, a situation. Had a little bit of a look there. You know what I'm saying? It was nice, man. The it's new venue nice. is crazy. It's, it's very spacious, very big. A lot of little compartments, very different beautiful. rooms. They got the hookah on dizzy. Hookah, hookah was on deck. They got the outdoor section. Outdoor was on deck. We was out there with the blunts and all that. Shout out to them boys. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more in the future. But shout mm-hmm. out to them. Shout out to them. Uh, the New York primary uh, primaries are coming up. Just wanted to just drop that out. That's gonna be June twenty eighth, and you know, of course, we we gonna keep that same energy we kept in twenty twenty. This is a midterm election, so congressional seats are up. That means mm-hmm. Congress, House of Representatives, and the governorship. Of the state of New York, so th- that election's happening June twenty eighth. Mm. Make sure you're registered. You know what I'm saying. Make sure you can get a l- let's get a little bit more of these knuckleheads out of out of the fucking out of their seats and and just move on and let's create this world that we need to be living in. Cause too much shit going on these days. Every day you wake up, some more bullshit, shootouts. And all of this, you know, definitely prayers up for Buffalo. Absolutely. Prayers up for, I think there was another shooting in L.A. at a, at a na- nail salon. It was at least five. It was a lot. It was, it a, was lot. a lot of spring up. So, that was, know, uh, yeah, that Buffalo joint was heavy, though. For sure, for sure. And like, you already know how it goes out here. So, mm-hmm. um, unfortunately, the only way to kind of, like, change shit is if we all do it, if we all get together and do it. But, yeah. So this just a little reminder, June 28th, New York primaries. If you're old enough to vote, if you're registered, go do your thing. Let's do it. Um, last but not least, in the political realm, first black LGBT woman press secretary, Kareem John Pierre. Mm-hmm, Congratulations. Mm-hmm. You already know we see you, sister. It's a big deal. Queen, so big spotlight. You already know that's we out here in these screens. This is exactly what happens when we get engaged in the situation. Is what I'm saying. Mm. So just right. take that, take that into consideration as you go ahead and you you know you do you do you. You're right. And that's what's going on in these streets. Mm, the streets is burning up, burning, burning, burning. Up out here. It's a burning lot of guan. much aguan. Okay, okay. Big well, you teams. know, once you running around, you scuffing up the souls in the streets. Right, right. You got to wind down a little bit. Let's wind down. You know what I'm saying? With that, with that, with that. With that lighter, with that, that lighter. Go and get that thing Let's fired up. 
while we have another smoking session in the smoking section. Mm. Welcome back, man. Smoking Welcome section. back. It's been a minute. We it's got been a minute. we got the we got the high life in the background. You know what I'm saying? In the background. We got Uncle Les over here chilling in the cut. There you go. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna get it going, put that thing in the air. Like we just don't care. Of course. You know, once we get up in this room, we wanna we wanna get inquisitive. We wanna ask some questions. We wanna find out some things about this marijuana life. You know what I'm saying? What's going on? What's some you got for interesting us? news? So you know, you know the kid. I'm a I'm a Jersey boy through and through. <laughs> you you already know about Let's me. Get it. Of you course. Know what I'm of course. So we did a thing. You know what I'm saying? Jersey went ahead and did a little thing. Mm-hmm. They finally went ahead and made recreational marijuana legal. Like, they been did it. Did they? Right? They been kind of announced it and and put it in the works, but now it's official. So, on April 21st, just passed, the day after 420, they opened up 12 dispensaries. Now, these 12 dispensaries were currently medical dispensaries. So, you could only get medical marijuana. You had to be a patient. patient. You had to have a subscription, all of that good stuff. So, on the 21st of April, um, they allowed all of these dispensaries dispensaries to carry recreational marijuana and sell to adult use buyers so that was the 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 first rollout it made it official no recreational sales of marijuana have ever been legalized or made in the state of new jersey before that day right bam day one brought in 1.9 million dollars serving 12,500 buyers imagine imagine what first happens. day just light work here hold that you know what i'm saying that's all revenue then, Rise, a dispensary in Bloomfield, New Jersey, which is actually one of my neighboring cities from where I grew up in, okay. they opened up at 6 a.m. on the 21st. So they was like, we getting it early. They opened up. They were actually the first, their customers was the first official legal purchases in the state of New Jersey. So that's kind of crazy. And that kind of happened like a block up from where the kid grew up. So it was like, you know what I mean? Early bird getting the worm. Yeah, man. They man. not playing with you. One of the major concerns, though, for the expansion, it was these medical marijuana dispensaries. You know, they converting them, they turning them <clears throat> into adult use centers. They gonna get overcapacitated. They don't want all these people coming in. Medical marijuana patients. They ain't gonna have. You know, what I mean, longer lines might run out of stock. All of these things came up when they was deciding to roll this out. Mm-hmm. One of the things they did to avoid this. All the dispensaries have sep- separate lines. So if you want to get your medical marijuana, I go over here, you get in this line. Some of them got different hours, different times. They might open up two hours earlier uh, than the recreational hours just to allow the medical uh, patients to kind of go ahead and do their thing. But all of them have two different lines. So if you want the recreational marijuana, you go on one line. For the medical marijuana, you go on another line. Um, and then after they did day one, they kind of pretty much saw it wasn't no issues anyway. It wasn't super overcrowded. It wasn't packed. Mm-hmm. It happened a day after 420. None of them medical marijuana patient, patients was getting up that early anyway to come. They already got it in yesterday. Mm-hmm. They chilling. Um, but it was pretty crazy. Um, so now New Jersey is home. Well, it was already home to 128 certified medical marijuana patients. So there was a big fear of running out of stock. You know, due to the expansion, they already got it popping with the medical marijuana. Now you're going to bring in recreational. But clearly that didn't happen. Um, What does this mean for the independent dispensaries? So we talk about the 12 dispensaries that opened up. That's the whole state of New Jersey. So you're talking about 12 dispensaries spread out through the whole state. That's not really a lot. No. Where the mom and pop joints going to come out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Where the the equity, the DEI, diversity joints. You know what I'm saying? When are those initiatives going to kick into play? Well, we looked at it, um, and in late March, the Cannabis Regulatory Commission approved 102 conditional licenses. Now, a conditional license means the awardee has four months to find a retail space, obtain a local approval to operate, and they got to apply for an annual license. So they got to do all three of those things within four months. So pretty much it's like a, it's like a permit to get your driver's license. They give you like the little permit. You gotta yeah. still go study for the test, go get a couple things, right. then come back and holler at me, and I'll give you official, you know, official license. Um, according to the CRC, 37 of the first 68 
of those uh, conditional licenses were diversity owners. So majority uh, ownership has to be either um, uh, you have to identify as black, Latin, a Asian, uh, a disabled veteran, mm -hmm. or a woman, um, or a resident who has a cannabis charge. So they looking out for all the people you know who yeah. impacted. Yeah. So these is like first come first serve. Like the like, state I is like prioritizing the applications from these businesses. Disabled veteran, I like that. All of that, you know what I'm saying? So they look, they looking out. They not, you know what I mean? They not just playing. They not just talking to talk. They actually walking the walk. Apparently. So that's what, that's what we're gonna see. So hopefully in the next couple of years, you are gonna start to see you know the outside dispensaries, the little mom and pop joints, mm -hmm. come up, and you're gonna be able to get your joint. Now another thing that's going down. Since Jersey went ahead and pulled the trigger on mm -hmm. the recreational, right? PA, Pennsylvania, right next door. Right next door. They playing games. <laughs> so all of their residents are starting to come over to Jersey. Imagine that. Cop that legal recreational. Of course. And, and bring take it that back, thing back home. Come on, like what we doing? Like they not playing. They just take that scepter right across that bridge from um from Philly to train. Sometimes you ain't even got to cross no water. It's like, it's right there across the street. Like, the border right there. So I don't know what they doing, why they playing. But hopefully they get hip to it. Follow the lead of Jersey. I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a red state. I mean, so you I don't might know. as well. Yeah, yeah. I know. They so not playing. They already, know. They already kind of messing around with the election as it is. Like, exactly. So... So that's how it's going down out there. Shout out to Jers. You know what I'm saying? The Garden State. The Garden State. Really, really making it the Garden State. Right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? What you you see, you see what, what I did, did there. there. You know what I'm saying? And we out here. It's still a long way to go. But um, so far, so good, man. Shout out to Jersey. Hometown. We proud, man. Stand up. Jersey, stand up. What up, what up, what up? Stand up. You know what I'm saying? You know what hey, I'm saying? man. And that's it. That's how we That's all we got for the smoking session. Something, something light, something close light. to home. Yet informative. You know what I'm saying? So Imagine. I hope that. Go sit with that. You know what I'm saying? And tell your, your state. All your your assemblymen, all of them, get get them together and tell them, look, Jer look look at Jersey, mm. or get it together, or get voted out this year in your midterms, cause one of the two gotta happen. You already know, See herbal ya. tea, herbal tea dispensary might be coming Ooh. soon. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> all right, we're gonna leave that there, and we're gonna end it like we always like to end it what on a high note. Make it what? Got it rolled up. Now who really tryna hit one? Puff, puff, then we pass. Then we pass.